Hey y'all, welcome to the Crafty Cove. If you like farmhouse decor on a Dollar Tree budget, you are in the right place. Today's video is my first video in a while. I have been under the weather, but I'm feeling better and I'm back at it. So today we're doing a farmhouse collab with some amazing, amazing crafters. And we're going to talk about that in just a little while. But for now, let's get right into it. DIY number one. Okay, y'all, it is a beautiful morning in Kentucky. So I am doing my voiceover out on my back deck. So you're going to hear all kinds of noises, probably a lot of birds, whippoorwills, and different sounds. So <laughs> forgive me, but it's just beautiful today. So I took an 11 by 14 canvas from Michael's. Went ahead and removed the canvas, and then I'm taking the frame, and I'm going to go ahead and stain it in some Waverly Wax in Antique. After I get that finished, I put it to the side to let it dry. And now I'm going to take 11 popsicle sticks. I'm going to put these in two piles, one pile of six, one pile of five. The pile of six, I'm going to take some Country Gray by Apple Barrel, and I'm just going to put it on my popsicle stick and rub it in with a um sorry i lost my train of thought a paper towel because i wanted this weather like weathered like barn barnwood look and this was the best way i could think of to achieve it after those six are done i'm going to take some celery by waverly chalk paint and do the other five again just put a little paint on my stick um rub it in blend it in with a paper towel now what we're going to do is we're going to start gluing our, or not gluing, stapling our sticks to our frame. So we're going to flip it over and we're going to start, um, sorry y'all, I'm having trouble with this voiceover this morning. <laughs> we're going to start um, putting our popsicle sticks down. We're going to do one gray, one celery, one gray, one celery. We're just going to alternate all the way down. And I'm using a stapler because I didn't want like the hot glue globs that can sometimes show up when you're using hot glue in the like the corners around the edges of this um of the frame here so I just used my staple gun and it worked out perfectly sometimes I had to stop and take one or two out and redo them because it's such a tight fit that there were times that I like didn't get my staple into the actual frame and you'll see here in just a minute I did that like right here so I had to take it out and do it again. But eventually I get them all on there and again, just staple, using the staple to staple them down. Then I flip it over. This is what it looks like. I love the look of it already. But again, I wanted barn wood. So I'm gonna take some white Waverly chalk paint. I'm going to paint it on with a small brush, just light amount. Sometimes I get a little heavy handed, but that's okay. We can fix that. So I'm just brushing it on and then I'm just taking my paper towel and kind of blending it all in and getting it to the stage that I want. Sometimes I need a little bit more. Again, it, this all depends on your distressing preference. You don't even have to do this step. If you liked it just the way it was, then don't even worry about distressing. But this is going to go perfect in my home. After we get that white finished, we're going to do the same exact thing with Waverly Wax in Antique. Again, just like painting on some light coats, taking my paper towel, blending it in, and just getting it to the colors that I want. Again, trying to make this look like barnwood. I think it turned out really, really, really cute. We're just making a little Highland cow picture. They are so expensive everywhere I've looked. So I thought, you know what? I'm just going to make my own. So here we are. We're finished in just a second. Here we are finished. And all I did was got on Cricut and made me a, a decal of a Highland cow. And this was just on Design Space. So it was free because I have the all access or Cricut access or whatever it's called. So there was no cost in this. So I get this cut out. I had to use two pieces of transfer tape because I don't have any regular transfer tape on hand right now. I only have my Cricut Joy transfer tape. So it wasn't quite big enough. So <clears throat> excuse me. I just put it all down. I take my time pulling it up. And if something doesn't want to stick, I just put it back down and pull it up again. Now, this did not rip my stencil. This did not peel or chip away at any of the paint. It was 
absolutely perfect. And this is my favorite project in this entire video. I absolutely love it. Super simple, but oh my goodness, such a statement. Y'all let me know what you think about it in the comments below. So again, today I'm part of a farmhouse collab that is hosted by my friend CJ and all of these amazing, amazing crafters. If y'all want some good farmhouse decor ideas, then make sure you check out the link in my description box below. You will not be disappointed, I promise. Okay, y'all, DIY number two. For this next one, we're going to take one of these barn shelf center sitters from the Dollar Tree. I removed the roof line, but I'm saving that. We're going to put it back on. And I'm going to paint three good coats of Waverly White chalk paint on this just to make sure that I can get that heart and all of that black covered up. Next, I'm going to take a bandana from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to kind of figure out the size I need and cut out exactly what size that I do need. Now I'm going to take, this is a new technique that I learned and I'm so excited about it. I'm going to go ahead and put on some Mod Podge, one layer, let it dry completely. After it's dried completely, then I'm going to put my bandana exactly where I want it. I'm going to take a piece of parchment paper, and maybe y'all already know this technique, but I just figured it out or just learned it, and I love it. So I take my parchment paper, put it on top of my, um, uh, my ban bandana, and now we're going to take my Cricut Easy Press, and I'm going to start ironing this bandana on there. I'm not going to make you watch the entire thing. But at first I just hold it on there and then the second time around I kind of move it around just to make sure that it is all holding and y'all this worked perfectly and there were no wrinkles, no bubbles. I was in shock. So after we get that all on there the way we need it, we're just going to take our scissors and we're going to cut around any and all of the excess. Just fussy cut it all the way around the barn. So y'all already know that I'm outside, but if you hear a lot of um, traffic noises, we're having what's called a thunder run this weekend on Lake Cumberland in Kentucky. And even though I live like five miles from the lake, these boats are so loud that you can hear some of them here at my house. <laughs> so you may hear some in the background. Anyway. Next, I just went ahead and glued our roof line back on. I cut out a little pig and some red vinyl. I'm just peeling it off. I'm not even worrying about using transfer tape on this right here because it's a bigger piece. And I'm just going to stick it right there towards the bottom in the middle of my barn. After I get that finished, I am going to take this Farm Fresh sign that I got in a pack from um, Dollar Tree during the fall. And I'm going to paint this up with two good coats of Waverly White chalk paint. Then we're just going to glue that right to our barn. Next, I took this hula skirt that I got from the Dollar Tree, cut a few pieces off. And then I think I took maybe four or five pieces and just made a really simple shoestring bow out of this. I didn't have any raffia, but I loved the look of it. And maybe it's kind of like, hey, I don't know. Y'all know I usually like to make up stories with all my <laughs> projects. This took me a little while. I don't know why I made it so difficult, but, you know, it's me. So, after we get that one done, we are going to go ahead and make another super simple shoestring bow. I have to have some buffalo check, y'all. Later, you'll see more. And make a super simple bow out of that also. Now, I'm going to take some leftover greenery that I have from some picks. I'm just going to make like a little swag on our barn here. And then we are going to glue our um, hula stick bow down first. And then our buffalo check bow. And that is it. Y'all let me know what you think about this one in the comments. I love how it turned out. DIY number three. So for this DIY, I got these circles at um, a store called Mighty Dollar where I live. But I also wanted to show you what sometimes the Dollar Tree will have these. And they're $1.25 at least here. 
for six pieces. You can get six at Walmart, which is the other pack right here that I'm showing you. They're a little thicker and a little um, bigger, but they're more expensive. So I'm going to take six of these and cut, paint these on the front, backs, and all around the edges. Two good coats of country gray. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some antique Waverly chalk paint. I'm just going to, or no, antique Waverly wax. I'm going to go all around all of the edges of the circles and I'm just going to like feather it with this little brush. And they're not all going to look the same. They're going to be completely, you know, different. None of them are going to be, like I said, like the other one. And that's how I like it. I like things to be a little different. I don't want them to be all, mitch, mit, ugh, all matchy. But after we get all of those finished feathering around the edges, then we're just going to distress in the middles with um, more Waverly wax and antique. Now, I took my Cricut and I cut out six little farmhouse decals. And the size of these are, I, I made them in a size two by two to fit perfectly on these circles. And I'm just going to start putting them one on each of the circles on one side of the circle, not on both sides. These are a little, because they're so small, I had to really be careful to not rip anything or anything like that, but they are workable. I will, these were all in Cricut Design Space, and again, they were free to me because of my Cricut access. After we get that finished, we're going to take these three right here, and we're going to work with these right now. I'm just taking these little magnetic buttons from the Dollar Tree and gluing those on the back and these are going to be refrigerator magnets for my kitchen and i'm so excited they turned out so cute don't worry we're going to use the next three in the next project okay on to diy number four which is our last diy y'all didn't think i could do a project without buffalo check did you well, don't be disappointed. It's coming up right now. <laughs> so I'm going to take three of these farm animals that I had from various older projects. And they are painted black, but that's not going to matter. We are going to remove the strings off of all of these. And then we are going to go ahead and cover these in buffalo plaid um, vinyl from the Dollar Tree. I just cut down the size that I need. Put it on. And I'm doing fronts and backs of these. After I put it on, I just go ahead and use my craft knife and um, fussy cut all around each and every one of the animals. I just could not get this one on for some reason. Not where I needed it, not where I wanted it. So you're going to see me a couple times like taking it off, putting it back on. Yeah, it's just, that's how my brain works, y'all. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but we finally get it on there right. And I fussy cut around it. I'm going to show you this, you know, just right here. I do all three animals the exact same way. And again, I do the front and the backs of all three of these animals. After we get all that finished, now we're going to make like a little base for our animals because I want them to stand up. So I'm going to make eight sets of four tumbling tire blocks glued end to end. Not side to side, but end to end. So eight sets of these because you're going to use, or no six sets of these i apologize because you're going to use two sets on each of the animals after we get them all glued together six sets six sets of four end in now we're just going to get these covered in antique wax and by waverly i just go ahead and paint all over and then i go back in with a paper towel and wipe them to the desired color i want now we're going to start gluing our animals on and the way i do that is i glue our animals to one set of four and then i glue the other set of four right to both of those does that make any sense at all probably going to make more sense y'all watching me than listening <laughs> to me i just have no train of thought this morning i'm not sure exactly what's going on anyway gluing it to a set and then gluing the other set right in front here is where our other three circles came in. Now we are just going to take one and glue it right to the center of each of our animals with the corresponding animal. That one said farm fresh bacon. This says farm fresh eggs, the one that goes on the um, chicken here. And the one that goes on the cow says country dairy. 
and that's it i could not do a video without buffalo check i hope you all enjoyed this let me know in the comments below what you think of this one So here we are at the final reveal. I hope you all enjoyed this video today. I had so much fun because y'all know I love my farmhouse decor. Don't forget to check out the playlist in the links er, in the comment in the description box below. I hope you all have an amazing blessed weekend and make sure you comment and let me know what you think of these farmhouse projects. Thanks so much for watching. Y'all come back now. You hear?